What's up guys, today I'm going to have a bit of a chat about liquidity and imbalance. These for me are two of the most, one of the most important things we need to look for when we are trading like the institutions. Now, the biggest thing for me about these two things is this will help us identify where retail is sitting in the market. Okay, now when we want to follow the institutions, institutions will always be buying where retail is selling and selling where retail is buying. Now, to spot this, we need to be able to understand liquidity. Liquidity lies in the form of any kind of order. So buy limit, sell limit, sell stocks, buy stocks, as well as sell um, stop losses, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so as a retail trader, we are taught to buy and sell. Especially with all these other concepts like support resistance, um, you know, trend lines, fib, all those kinds of things. Okay. Now we need to use that to our advantage. So the other thing that needs to be understood is an institution knows where retail traders are going to be doing this because they set it up exactly like that so that they can trap retail traders. Now, remember, they will always, this is just like gambling. They will always make you believe that you were right that one time out of 10, okay? And how will they do that? So let's say hypothetically, this is a resistance line, okay? Now, however far back it is, as retail would call it. Now, we see price come down to it, reject very nice. Okay, sweet, we're going to go and enter on the second touch. Cool, we have our stop loss just below these lows or the previous lows, whatever they were. And maybe we target these last highs over here. Cool, we got a very nice risk to reward trade. Very, very easy. Now, how does this begin to trap us then? Or retail traders, should I say? Well, we do the same thing over here. Cool, we go for the previous highs, have our stop loss below these previous lows, and we get taken out. Cool, no problem. We, we had a very nice trade to begin with. What happens? Price comes back, still rejecting, still rejecting. Cool, let's go and enter again. And once again, what happens? We take it below the previous lows. Now we have an even bigger loss. Now, just in those two trades, we've almost gone and lost everything we made over here. Okay, even though that this was a very good risk to reward trade. Now, let's see how this comes about. Let's see. Okay, price comes further down and we don't ever see a retest of this level until here. Cool. So retail, we'll go. Sweet. It held very nicely here as res um, your resistance, so surely it should act as support. Cool. Let's go have our stop loss ab above these previous highs. And once again, we get stopped out. Okay. So this is how a retail trader will think. And the way we're going to be able to identify this as an institutional trader or someone that follows the institutions we will be able to make a lot more money, have better risk to reward trades and wait for trades to come to us. Right. Now, remember that retail is always taught to have their stop losses or buy stops above or below any um, like contractions, resistance lines, trend lines, etc, etc. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work in practice. So an easy way that was taught to me to find these places of liquidity is we go and we grab a line like this. Now you ask me, why do I draw it over here? Well, let's have a look at this. Price went and creates a contraction box over here. And let's say hypothetically, uh, retail went and bought on the breakout of this box. Okay. So we have our little contraction box. People have buy orders on top of this box with a stop loss just below, okay? Or sell orders just below, and then our stop loss is obviously just above, okay? If you had your sell order straight in, which you probably wouldn't have because it didn't, hadn't created the contraction there, you probably would have been taken out. Now, as I said, we will have our stop loss just below this contraction box. Let's look at the buy, okay? Let's say we wanted to target the previous highs, which any retail trader would want to try and do. Maybe they moved stop loss to entry here, maybe they didn't. 
but we had, do have stop losses lying below this contraction box or just any wicks for that matter. Okay. Now let's look even lower. We have more liquidity lying over here. We have more liquidity lying over here. And we even have liquidity lying all the way down here and down here. Okay. But let's look at what where price is relevant to now. Okay. Again, this is where the market makers are really going to try and hurt people wherever they possibly can. Okay, and what do I mean by that? Well, as we just said, market makers will have, oh, retail traders will have buy stops just above the, the contraction boxes and sell stops just below the contraction boxes. Okay, now let's look at this. Say we, we were a retail trader, we had our, our sell stop just below here and our uh, stop loss just above this, this high over here maybe targeting previous lows doesn't really matter in this case let's just say it's previous lows now as you can see this was a fake out right we went fake out cool we just got stopped out very very easily what were we doing as institutional or um, people who follow the banks right we were buying over here we were buying in the breakout because we would be looking for higher but that's not necessarily about what what this video is about okay we just need to understand why these green lines is liquidity that we are looking for future trades. Okay, let's have a look at this. So I've just shown you why liquidity is created. Now let's let's see how it goes into practice, right? So for example, we over here, we know that there's liquidity down here. There's not necessarily too much liquidity liquidity up here. So where should the market be moving? Well. Again, as we just said, here's all the liquidity. So market will more than likely come all the way down here to collect all of this. And perfectly there, we've come and done the same thing over here and same thing over here. Right, now what have we done in creating all this liquidity? Well, all that's happened is now we've moved. Well, let me just delete everything here so it's a bit easier to see. All that's gone and happened now is we have created liquidity above here. We've created liquidity above here again over here and over here okay remember liquidity is in the form of stop losses buy buy orders sell orders any of that type of stuff right so we've gone and cleared all the liquidity down here however we have left some imbalance and liquidity down here i'll get to imbalance a little bit later in the video so as we can see price came down collected all of this liquidity and remember, retail more than likely would be looking at this and thinking, oh, sweet, here's our, what, resistance, right? We go and buy off resistance, stop loss below previous lows over here. Guess what? Stopped out. However, we know there's liquidity lying below these candles over here and these wicks over here. So we would be looking for our buys over here. Okay. Now. Remember, we still have liquidity lying over here. So let's see how this begins to play out. Currently, we've created more liquidity underneath here. So will we go and collect it first? Let's just see how it plays out. Remember, CAD JPY is not a pair that I trade very often. And already you can see liquidity doesn't matter what pair, what crypto, what stock. It is exactly the same for every single one of them. So now let's let's continue looking. Let's look at that. We've gone and collected all that liquidity. Let's continue watching. Remember, now we've created liquidity over here. Okay. So now we've gone, we have cleared this liquidity. We've cleared this liquidity and this liquidity, right? Now, where is the more liquidity? Currently lying underneath here and obviously under these lows. All right, let's see how this begins to play out. Okay, cool. Price is still creating more liquidity. Right, now we've gone all the way up, almost taken all of this liquidity out. Cool. Again, we've gone and created more liquidity over here. Let's see how it plays out. Okay, now we've gone into a little bit of a tight range. Now we've come, we've collected all of this liquidity and this liquidity over here. So we can delete those. Can you already see how you look for where the most liquidity is? And you can already almost begin to predict where the market is going to go. Look at that. All of that liquidity just gone and cleared out just like that. 
Now, I'm just using liquidity here. I haven't looked at order blocks. I haven't looked at inefficiency, nothing like that. All that's happened is we look for where retail traders are going to be putting their stop losses. Okay, now, now what happens? We have liquidity again above here. And don't forget the liquidity we still have down underneath these lows, right? All of this has been cleared for now. So let's see. Currently being so low, we've created quite a bit of inefficiency above here, all these quick movements through here. So let's see what price wants to do. Okay, cool. We've created liquidity under here, liquidity under here, under here, and under here. On lower time frames, the, all that liquidity would seem a lot more significant. And already you can see just in one big candle, we went and cleared every single last bit of that liquidity. Now let's go. Okay, cool. We've created a little bit more liquidity just above here. So maybe we just go for a little bit of a liquidity grab up here before we continue to the downside. Let's just go and mark off all of this. Just going to draw that over there. Just like that, right? So maybe what we're going to see is price come up, clear that and clear that before we continue to, to see further downside. Let's see what happens. Okay, all we've done is create more liquidity to the downside. Just like this. Okay, let's see how it goes. Now let's have a look at where that was. Look at that. Now we've cleared that and that. All of that over there. Cool. Let's now see what, what else is to come. Right, now we've created even more just above these highs over here. Sweet. Okay, we, now we've gone and cleared all of that and created liquidity below these lows. So, one thing you guys need to be able to see and understand is that the market will be constantly creating liquidity and looking for more. It's a lot of liquidity, a lot of words, <laughs> but um, as long as you guys are beginning to understand that these are the kinds of places uh, retail are going to be putting all their stop losses. Okay, now let's see how uh, price has gone up even further, coming for this liquidity, taking it out. Cool, remember now we have a liquidity under here, under here, and under here, so let's see. Okay, we've cleared some of that. Now we've pushed a little bit further to the upside, further upside, cool. Now more than likely we might see it come back and clear all of this liquidity, let's have a look. Because now we've basically cleared that, we've cleared that. And it's just really that remaining to the upside, so let's see what happens. Cool, as I just said, cleared, 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 cleared. Okay, so just one quick thing you guys need to understand. Don't think of liquidity as this massive thing that is so hard to understand. Just go back on, on any random chart. Some, just go to something you don't ever trade and try exactly what I've done here. Try and predict where price is going to go. And I promise you it will help you so much when you're just watching the market play out in front of you. You'll so quickly begin to see how things are piecing together and why the market is doing what it's doing okay now let's quickly go on to some imbalance right again imbalance is also not something that should be scary it's literally so simple and you're going to see what i mean by that now another point i'd like you guys to understand is that the market is fractal and what i mean by that is What's happening on the hourly is setting up on the 30 minute, the 15, 5, 3, and even 1 minute charts. Okay. Now, let's say, for example, we were looking for a buy at one of these order blocks over here. Okay. Something like this. When price has pushed to the upside over here, what's happened? Okay. We've seen the one minute chart more than likely begin to form quite a strong downward formation. And sometimes you can catch very nice moves in that with a very, very good risk to reward. So understand that the market will always be setting up on a lower time frame for something that you see on a higher time frame. That's just a quick point I wanted you to understand, especially about liquidity. Right now with imbalance. Right now, what's what's going to happen is we're going to find big, strong pushes in the market, such as these, as retail would say, engulfing candles. OK, 
Now, how are we going to use this and how, how are we going to draw this out? Now, slowly but surely, you won't ever really need to draw this out. You'll just begin to understand how it works. But for the beginning, what I want you to do is grab your rectangle and begin to draw these out. Now, how do we draw these? Okay, so again, we look for these engulfing candles, as retail would say, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And it doesn't only have to be our bearish candles, it's also bullish candles. Now, why did I draw it like this? So if this is going to be, let me just draw this candle out in green. Okay, our focus candle is this one here in green. We need to look for our engulfing candle. Once we've found that, we need to look for the, the first candle to the just before it and the first candle just after it. Now we need to find where the wicks of those candles are. Okay, and let me just move this so you guys can see it. Okay, once, once we've identified our inefficiency, which would be this candle, then we find the first candle before it and the candle just after it. Now, why are these ones going to be important? We need to look for the where the bottom wick of this candle is and where the top wick of this candle is. Okay, let me just show you again, just so it's easier to see. We need to look for the top wick of this candle and the bottom wick of this candle. Then how do we draw it? We go and grab our rectangle and we, we pull it from the bottom of this wick to the top of this wick over here, just across like that. Okay, now what does that mean? Further in the future, we're going to see price more than likely come and mitigate it by at least 50%. Okay, so we're going to see price, as we said, price will push down. Now it's created, all of this is inefficiency. I'll draw all of this out for you now to begin to also help you understand a little bit of liquidity, but we're just going to take this candle for now. So as we can see, price has come back and done what? Mitigated at least 50% of this candle. More often than not, it's almost to the T being 50% or the full imbalance, okay? The same thing with order blocks. It doesn't mean that it will. It needs to be mitigated in the next hour, next two hours, next 10 years for that matter, okay? So we can just see prices come up. It's mitigated by 50%, rejected very nicely off of that potentially come down to fall a little bit of inefficiency over here and pushed further up now mitigating all of it. Okay, so let's let's go and look for all the inefficiency that we can currently see in front of us. Right, so we first identified that candle. Now we've identified this candle. As you can see, there's still a wick over there to the, to the bottom of this candle, wick to the top side of that candle. And as you can see, let's go perfectly on the bottom of that wick and on the top of that wick, right? Now let's look for some more. Now this candle, we can see there's the bottom of this wick, top of this wick. This is how we're going to draw our, our imbalance. Okay, now how does imbalance actually help us trade? Well, it can help us understand where the market would like to go even further than just using liquidity, right? Liquidity, remember, as I said, lies in the form of stop losses, buy orders, sell orders, okay? imbalances is what candlesticks are telling us so remember how i said we created liquidity above here we created liquidity above here and we created liquidity above here okay now you can see how inefficiency has helped us understand that by creating all of this um big pushes to the downside we've begun to see that price needs to come back up and mitigate all of this inefficiency, right? Now let's go and draw this one. Bottom of this candle, or bottom of this wick, sorry, to the top of this wick, all the way across. Perfect. Now, this one over here, same thing. Bottom of this, can of this wick, to the top of this wick, all the way across. Now remember how I said, Inefficiency or imbalance will always be mitigated by at least 50%. Well, look at this candle. What did it do? Went and mitigated, as I said, to the T, 50% of the inefficiency, right? Now, once that happened, we can then move our inefficiency higher now to the top of that wick because all of this area, 
all of this area now has been mitigated, right? Now the only inefficiency lying in this candle is this area now. What's happened? We've gone and mitigated by 50% with this candle. Okay, then what can happen? Then we can move our inefficiency even higher than what? But yeah, again, mitigated by 50% with these two candles. Cool, now we're almost done with this inefficiency. Move it to the tops of those wicks. Now all we have remaining is this amount. And there you can see price came right through and mitigated the rest of it. Now we can safely delete that. Okay. Now let's let's look over here. Let's just take this one as a, as another example, just to help you guys spot it. Okay. Again, we look for our nice big um, engulfing candles, and then we will find our inefficiency. Now let me ask you this question: Why is this engulfing candle does does this one have no imbalance in it? Well, how did we say? It needs to look we need to have space between this wick and this wick okay so let's have a look here where's that wick all the way up here and look where this candle is down okay there's no inefficiency between the candle before and the candle afterwards so this does not have any imbalance however let's look at this one now nice speaking engulfing candle and let's have a look there's our wick on the candle before, there's our wick on the candle after. There's the space between it, right? So there's our inefficiency. Now let's see how this played out. Price came down, rejected off of the inefficiency, went all the way up, came down, doing what? Mitigating 50% of it. So what do we do? We go and move this down just like that. As you can see, boom. Now we come down, mitigate 50% of it again. Now we can further reduce this and then we've taken out the full inefficiency okay now please understand liquidity inefficiencies are used on any and every single time frame there's no limit to how you need to use these if you are a scalp trader you need to be looking for it on the 15 minute the five minute three minute and one minute if you're a swing trader look for weekly daily four hour inefficiencies Remember, things on a higher time frame, whether it be inefficiency, order blocks, liquidity, will always be respected a lot better. However, lower time frames will always set up for your higher time frame moves. So if you are a scalp trader, however, you are looking for a big long swing on, on a specific currency pair. Let's say, for example, in the future, you're looking for price to come back to maybe this order block over here. Okay, in the future, well, we know that up here, price needs to set up for a big sell to come down to this level so we can scalp our way down. And that's what I mean by the market being fractal. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below or message me on Instagram. I'm always happy to chat. And uh, please be sure to uh, drop a like on this video and then if you would like to join my free telegram I drop quite a bit of information in that video as well as a lot of breakdowns and um, Yeah, if you guys enjoyed it I'd appreciate the like and uh, yeah, check you guys next time